from Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Ralph Whedon again, Johnny. I'm glad I caught you before you left. Well, it's almost two hours before my plane leaves. What's on your mind? Now, the cable just came in from Manila. The amount taken on the burglary is roughly $75,000. That's dollars and not pesos. Dollars, yeah. They mentioned that a clerk has dropped out of sight. Native? An American. Name's Blake. Daniel Blake. Blake, all right. Now, that's all so far. Uh, what's your hotel in Manila? Do you know yet? Uh, yeah, the Hotel Tondo. Tondo, good. I'll get word to you there if I learn anything you can use. Well, good luck on the trip. Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Woodward Manila matter. Expense account item one, $1,850 airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Manila. Number 103. Will you go to the ticket office, please? Passenger yes, Dollar from incoming yes, PAL. My name is Dollar. I was being paged. Oh, yes. These gentlemen are waiting for you. Uh, this is Mr. Dollar, sir. Oh, yes. I'm Floyd McDonald, Mr. Dollar, local manager of the Woodward Company. Oh, how are you, sir? And this is Irving Morgan, my assistant. Mr. Morgan, well, glad to meet you. I've made arrangements like to have your luggage sent to your hotel if you'd like to do it that way. So Irving and I can drive you right in. Fine. It's done nice of you. Well, I know how it is. At least I don't want to bother with details after a long flight like that. You'll give me your luggage check, sir? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm have them right here. Thank you. Well, that's all I think. The car is right outside. We can give you the details of the burglary on the way in. He told me very little that I didn't already know. The store he managed, one of Manila's largest hardware stores, was part of the American-owned Woodward chain. He had discovered the loss of the $75,000 himself Monday morning when he'd entered his office and found the safe open. Naturally, I feel very badly about it. But everything that can be done is being done. I don't know who the main office is blaming it on, but I think you'll find that Floyd and I were anything but careless. We've got five years without a loss behind us to prove that. And it only takes one failure to ruin a success, Irving. There's $75,000. Do I understand that it was all American currency? No, no, it was made up of pesos, too. I stated the amount in dollars and cents when I reported the loss. Were you in the habit of keeping as much money as that in your office safe? Oh, it wasn't my idea, or to my liking. It was because of a company rule. They were worried about conditions on this side of the Pacific and ordered us to stop banking our cash here. Instead of the usual yearly transfer of our money, it has been going to the States once a month. Hmm. They didn't save much this time. What about this clerk, Dan Blake? Oh, don't get me started on him. No, there's nothing proved yet, Irving. What is it going to take to open your eyes, Floyd? We don't agree on just what to think about Dan, Mr. Dollar. In spite of the circumstances, I... Uh, well, I find it almost impossible to believe that Dan would do this to me. Could he have done it? Of course he could. He had access to the office and he could have memorized the combination of the safe. Yes, yes, that's true, but... I can't forget that he was a very good friend of mine. He was... Like a son to me. Was he in any trouble that you know of? Or any money? I hadn't heard of anything. He's been out of sight four days now. What kind of a search has been made for him? Well, I understand that the police have been working very hard. They class him as the chief suspect, too. Yes, but you've uh, got to realize that the Philippines aren't like the States, Dollar. It's not hard to drop out of sight here. It's a big world. I know. I just watched a lot of it pass by. Well... As soon as my luggage arrives and I can get into a fresh suit, I'll contact the police, see what they've got. Expense count item two, 350, including tip, a pitcher of gimlets delivered to my room. While I waited for my baggage to arrive, I relaxed in front of a window. My hotel was two blocks from Manila's Great Bay in a section called El Puerto. From my room, I could see enough of the Orient and the native craft working the harbor to give even a common hardware store burglary an atmosphere of intrigue. Expense account item three, 80 cents cab fare to police headquarters where I was shunted into a side office 
to wait for the sergeant in charge of the Woodward case. He finally showed up. Sergeant Malvar, you wait for me? Yes, my name is Dollar. I know. You come to talk of my burglary. You are a policeman? Well, not quite. I've been hired by an insurance company to learn what I can about it. What do you wish to learn from me? Whether you've made any progress? Have you gotten any place with your search for Dan Blake? Dan Blake? No, I do not look for him now. No, you don't? No. I have captured the thief. Oh? Who is it? Miguel Nosaleda. You've recovered the money? He will not say where it is yet, but he will say tomorrow, maybe. What evidence do you have, Sergeant? He cannot say where he was that night of the burglary. Is that all? He's by profession a thief. He was arrested while he was robbing another store last night. Uh-huh. Does he speak English? Oh, yes. wonder if I could talk to him. Maybe he's afraid to confess to the police, and maybe I can get him to talk. All right. You come with me. You do not stay long, only five minutes. That's good enough. Miguel? Uh, who are you? Why you come here? How old are you, Miguel? Fifty. Where do you work? No work. Get hurt in bombing, no work. You have any children? See, two daughters. Where do they work? Uh, does either one work at the Woodward Hardware Store? Work in prison. Both work in prison. Sergeant Malva says you stole some money from the Woodward store. No. Well, you'll make it easier for yourself if you tell the truth and give up the money. I don't got money. If I got money, then why I steal five pesos from other place? Why? <laughs> you tell police why. If I got lots of money, why I steal a little more? Why? Because I don't got lots of money. It's good enough for me, Miguel. Sorry I took up your time. You do not stay long? I think he wants to sleep. What would he say to you? That he didn't do it. <laughs> that if he had, you wouldn't have caught him stealing five pesos because he wouldn't have needed it. He need a kick in the head for his lying. Do you have any connection between him and the Woodward place? He tell you he got two daughters in prison? Yeah. He lies. They come out, but they do not go back to him because he steal their money. No. The daughters have connection with Woodward's? Connection? If we need connection, we find one all right. Tomorrow, maybe? I had an idea Sergeant Malva's philosophy reasoned that it was a lot easier to grill the wizened little prisoner than it would be to continue the search for Blake. But I left him to his own devices and cabbed to the Woodward store. I was told that neither Floyd McDonald nor Morgan were in, but that a secretary would help me. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dollar? I knew that you were coming out. My name is Charlotte Page. Floyd McDonald's my uncle. Oh, I didn't know that. He had to go out to Ermita with an order for a house that's being built there. Can I help you in any way? I want to look at the office, find out where the safe was. Oh, I can show you. Uh, I'll check this door first. Mm. Good stout lock. I have to have a key. Is this the only entrance? Well, the one window there, but it's in a blank wall. Mr. Dollar, I know you've been here only a little while, but have you learned anything? Not much, but... All of it looks bad for Dan Blake. I can't believe it. I just can't believe that Dan would do a thing like this. How well did you know him? Evidently not well at all. He stole the money. We're the same age. Found something in common working here together. I've had dinner with him occasionally, going to the beach. Know if he was in any kind of trouble? Debts or anything? No, I thought he was very happy and comfortable here. He seemed to be. Mm. Where's this safe now? It's under the rug near the desk. You have to lift the corner of the rug. Oh. Uh, did Dan Blake know where it was? Oh, yes. Everybody trusted him. He'd been here for years. Did he know the combination? No, I, I don't think so. Uncle Floyd handled the cash. Could he have memorized it? Well, I don't know that either. I hadn't given it a thought. Uh, I guess we can put the rug back. Oh, uh, I forgot to get Blake's address from the police. You happen to know what it is? Oh, Gotten it somewhere on Sampalot. I can find it on the payroll. It should be right here. It'd be 
too easy to find him there, wouldn't it, Mr. Dollar? Much too easy. But I might pick up a crumb or two. Oh, here it is. 307 Sampalock Street. 307 Sampalock. Thanks. Tell Mr. McDonald I was here, would you please? And that I'll be in touch tomorrow. <laughs> There was a fair biography of Dan Blake in his rooms. I learned that he was born in Duluth, Minnesota, 26 years ago, that his father wrote him occasionally, that he had sailed with the Merchant Marine during the war and had made a few inter-island trips after that. Floyd McDonald had said he was a student of the Philippines, and that was borne out by photographs and receipts from steamer and airlines. I made a list of the places he'd visited, but that was all I could do for that day. It wasn't until the next morning that I went to police headquarters and waited again for Sergeant Malva. Come back again. We do very good without you, Ralph. Well, pardon me. I don't want to butt in. I just wondered if you knew that Dan Blake spent a lot of time learning these islands. Oh? Do you know that he'd spent some time in San Jose, on Mindoro, on Marin Duke, and in Palo, on Leyte? I did not know. Well, it might pay you to check those places. There are more, too. From here, clear down to Mindanao. The search is finished. Huh? What do you mean? Dan Blake has been found. He was adrift in a dugout on Tayabas Bay. He was taken aboard a ship, and then he died. What killed him? He was shot many times. What about the money? It has not been found. Not yet. Uh, Sure, but maybe tomorrow. We'll return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. With winter in the wind, driving becomes more hazardous every day. Not as much for you in your car as for the people walking across the street or along the edges of a highway. A shoe touches a tiny strip of ice. Someone loses his balance, falls in the wrong direction, and there is sudden death. Check your car carefully. Make sure your brakes are good. Make sure your tires have a heavy tread. Check your steering wheel. Someone's life may depend upon the efficiency of your automobile upon the care of your driving. Now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Sergeant Malva, Manila Police, was again taking his inimitable approach to a subject, believing what he wanted to believe. When I asked him how he knew the body was that of Dan Blake, he told me the ship captain who had picked him up said so. How did he know? The man had mentioned the name before he died. That was all, and it wasn't enough for me. I put in a call for Floyd McDonald, the Woodward Company manager. Mr. McDonald's office. Is Johnny Dollar? Is Mr. McDonald there? No, he stepped out for a moment. This is Charlotte. Is there anything I can do? I'm calling from police headquarters. They uh, have a body down here. A body? Picked up by a ship someplace. They claim it's Dan Blake, but there wasn't any identification on him. You tell Mr. McDonald I want him to come and look at him? Yes. He should be back any minute. I'll tell him to come right down. When did this develop, Dollar? And why wasn't I notified? Nobody was notified, Mr. McDonald. Sergeant Malva was playing it close to his chest. And where is Sergeant Malva? He didn't tell me where he was going. He left word that we could look at the body, and he left. My name is Dollar, Corporal. See, si, you go in. Thanks. I know this is unpleasant, but we have to find out. Good Lord. Is this Dan Blake? Yes. Yes, it's Dan. Cover him up, please. Where did they find him? In a dugout canoe. Someplace called Tayabas Bay, I think. Yes. Tayabas Bay, southwest of here. Who found him? A man by the name of Kovar. He's the captain of an inter island schooner. Could we leave here? Yeah, sure. What happened, do you know? Well, not firsthand. Shot in the back four times. He was alive for a short time after Captain Kovar picked him up. The money has not been found. I see. Then there's no explanation yet. Not that I know of. 
Schooner is anchored offshore just south of the Pasig River. You know where that is? Yes. I'd like to talk to this Kovar. I guess I can hire a boat to take me out there, huh? I'll uh, drive you down to the docks. As a matter of fact, I'd like to go with you. Well, it's a good idea if you have the time. Well, I'll take the time. That's my car there. That must be the boat. The uh, Sea Nymph, is that the name? That's it. Skipper, that's the one there. The Sea Nymph. That's a little precious for a wreck like that, isn't it? Some are even worse. I don't know how they stay afloat. There's somebody on deck. What do you want? Are you Captain Kovar? Yeah, that's right. I want to talk to you about the body you brought in. Police? No, this man is McDonald. Dan Blake worked for him. Hey, Cobra, get a line on the shore boat. Okay, come on board. I'll put the ladder over for you. Watch it now. She's got quite a pitch today. Go ahead. Right. Have you got it? Yep. <sighs> My name is Dollar, Captain. I'm working on the burglary for an insurance company. Yeah, uh, come out in the cabin. I'd like to learn about that burglary. All that police sergeant would tell me is that I got the money and I better give it to him. Well, that'll take some doing. Yeah, take the chairs, you two. I'll take the bunk here. Well, now, what's this all about? Well, there's a little over $75,000 missing. He didn't have anything when I picked him up. He was in a dugout canoe? That's right. Looked like a Moro craft to me. Oh, I see what you mean. No, it was empty. I looked it over. How long did he live? Oh, 15, 20 minutes. Maybe not that long. I don't think taking him aboard did any good for him, but I didn't know. Did he say anything about the shooting? Nothing that I could understand. What did he say? I told you I couldn't understand. Just some noise. But you were able to understand his You're name. beginning to sound like that police sergeant, mister, and I don't like it. I thought I was doing right when I brought that boy Now, in. wait a minute, Captain. I wish no, I'd but... left him there. Police right now are getting papers to search my ship, and now you start. I'm not making any accusations, but you are the last person to see him alive. I'm interested in what he said. Well, he said Blake. Blake. That's all I can understand. Tell you the truth, I wish I'd left him there. But you know what I think? What's that? If he went from Manila to someplace on Tayabas Bay where he had his dugout, plenty could happen. It's about 60 miles. You heard about our Hucks, our rebels? Yeah, I've read about them. They're a bunch of cutthroat scum, and they don't think twice when they get the chance to kill an American. $75,000, so much the better. Hmm. What do you think, Mr. McDonald? Well, certainly a possibility. The Hucks are active. I guess there's not a chance of putting our finger on it if that's what happened. Not a chance. All right. Then let's leave that possibility until the last. I wasn't sure of Captain Kova. If he was telling the truth, he was doing so without tact. And if he was lying, he seemed to be doing that with complete confidence. I didn't bother questioning his crew. I knew that Sergeant Malva, if he hadn't already, would take care of them when he returned to search the schooner. I spent the rest of the morning and part of the afternoon in routine legwork on the case, and at 4 o'clock, I got the sergeant's report. There was nothing from one end of the ship to the other end, my men look. I know it is there, but it was not found. Did you talk to the crew? Yes, I talked myself to them. They do not hear Dan Blake say anything. The captain is the only one who hear him. What have you done with him? What is there I can do? Nothing. I leave his ship, and that is all. Huh? What now? What now? There is nothing now. So the hooks killed him. Then that is all. I learned a few things about Floyd McDonald this afternoon. So? He's up to his neck in debt. Did you know that? So? I don't know about the Philippines, but in the States, it's an old pitch to have a patsy found full of bullets, but without the missing money. I do not know what you say. And maybe it looks like Dan Blake is the thief when somebody else is. I haven't been able to find a reason for the kid to have done this. Now I find that McDonald needed money. I did not know that. It would not be wise for me to question him. In Manila, Mr. McDonald is not the man to suspect. 
He's known as a man with honor. Yeah, yeah, so I gathered. That's probably why he could get so far into debt. I didn't think it would be wise at that point for me to question Floyd McDonald either. I waited until his store closed that evening and until his assistant, Irving Morgan, had gotten to his home. Dollar, I've been thinking about you. Come on in. Thanks. Well, how's it going? It's hard to tell. From what I hear, the money is gone. Good. Did McDonald tell you that? Yeah, isn't that right? Maybe. I don't make it a habit to go around switching the values of national problems, but it's occurred to me that these hucks could be pretty handy people to have around. I don't get you. Well, when a killing outside the city can't be explained any other way, it's marked off to the hucks. Oh, you don't think they shot Blake? I'm not as sure of it as everybody else seems to be. Just what do you mean, Mr. Tyler? How much did you know about McDonald's personal life? Well, I, I see him socially, if that's what you mean. We're, we're good friends. Did he owe you any money? Seems to me that's a very personal question. I have to ask that kind once in a while. I've learned that McDonald owes a lot of money to a lot of people. A thousand here, fifteen hundred there. Loans, gambling debts. Uh, he'd be ruined if this became common knowledge, Mr. Dollar. He'd, he'd lose his position, everything. How far do you think McDonald would go to save himself? Are you telling me you think Floyd arranged this theft? Well, well it's something to think about. And killed Blake to... Co oh, no, no, he didn't. You're sure Floyd of that? He couldn't have. He's not that kind of man. He might be desperate, yes, but he'd never do a thing like that. Would he be at home now? I don't think so. It's, it's only seven. He usually has dinner at the club. What club? The merchant's club. Uh, Mr. Dollar, don't question him down there. Wait until he gets home. All right. I can count on you not to tell him I'm waiting for him? I certainly can. I want to stay as far away from this thing as possible. An hour and a half later, a cab dropped me in front of Floyd McDonald's home. The residence, at least, was a picture of propriety. Set in a fashionable suburb, it was within earshot of a bellboy somewhere in the bay. I followed a sidewalk across a neatly hedged lawn, and halfway to the house, I stopped to watch a man come out of the front door. Captain Culver. Who is it? What do you want? What are you doing here? Forget it. I can't. What's your part in this? Never mind. Forget your saw me. Come here. Culver. Get off. Get off. Culver. Culver. Oh. Now you... Oh, I didn't expect this. You live here? Yes. I came to talk to your uncle. Is he here? No. And Captain Cova was with you. Yes, Captain Cova was with me. You're hurt. What did he do to you? He hit me. Why? Because he's insane. He thought he had to hit me. He wanted the money. Gave it to him. You gave him the money? Yes, all of it. Every penny of it. I didn't want it anymore. That's not what I mean. You were holding the money for Dan Blake. For us. We were in it together. Cova learned it from Dan before he died. Yes. Dan kept calling for me while he was dying. So this... Cova thought he could blackmail me. He thought I gave him the money to keep him quiet. Dan and I were trying to get away from this place. Have a life of our own. We tried. Oh, I don't care what happens to me. Where's the telephone? Through that door, but you don't have to call. I'll go to the police by myself. I just wanted to wait till Uncle Floyd got home. I'm not worried about your personal problems, Charlotte. That's not my job. Cova and that $75,000 is all I want. I tried not to waste a minute, but time slipped by. Fifteen minutes on the phone, 25 to get back to Manila. When Sergeant Malva finally arrived at the harbor police dock, a boat was ready for us. Come as quick as I can. His ship is not at anchor. I checked it. He moved out about 20 minutes ago. We go then. Come here, Andana. He 
It's a dark night. What if we don't find him? He do not get out of the way. The boats near Corregidor are right now waiting. The girl, she was an accomplice. She held the money, so if he was picked up, you couldn't prove possession. She was going to meet him later. The hooks shot him? That's what Kova told her. So? But the hooks do not kill him. What's that? Police, doctor. He say bullets do not kill Blake. Blake choked to death. Think... Kova choked him to learn the secret. I think we can prove that, Sergeant. We get any more speed out of this thing? Come on, let's get inside out of the spray. A 20-minute start isn't much when a schooner with auxiliary power is matched against a police boat. With our speed and the beams from four searchlights fanning out around us, we covered every possible course that Culver could have set. It took us less than 30 minutes. Come on! Already. We go outside. Yep, there she is. Now I show this man we are strong. But I need more! We fire in front of him. Curse me, that man, when I search his ship. Now, Sergeant Malvari, curse back. But it is more late! Is he crazy? Get one of our lights. You'd better douse the others before he smashes them. But they need more! Angela! He's crazy. That depends on whether the doctors works for him or not. All I can see is his weight now. Do not get away. I open my nicks of Arcadilla! We move in right now. Go on board. Captain Angel started. He's shouting something. Captain Kova! There is no use to fight! We come aboard! Cabra, get that engine started! Get it started! Oh, the crew's turning on him. You won't, won't you? I'll write you won't! Gotta be stopped, Sergeant. Have your men stop him. Come on, there, he's running forward. But he's more You are my witness. The officials do not like the killing of accidentals. I'm your witness. Now, if you'll put me aboard, I'd like to find that stolen money. <laughs> Expense account item three, $230, blanket item covering hotel, transportation, etc. Item four, same as item one. Expense account total, $3,940. Remarks? After the arrest of Charlotte Page, the stolen funds were counted in front of witnesses, and the amount was not as large as was claimed by McDonald. I don't know what you can do about it. Everybody seems to be out after something these days. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien's latest picture is the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Bill Conrad, Lillian Baeff, Robert Griffin, Bill Johnstone, High Everback, and Jack Crucian. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You can sing it again on CBS tonight for a whole hour of fun-packed, music-packed entertainment. And maybe Dan Seymour will be calling you to solve one of the tuneful little riddle songs that lead to a chance at radio's largest cash jackpot, $5,000, plus $10,000 more in wonderful prizes. Alan Dale, Judy Lynn, Bob Howard, the Riddlers, and Ray Block's Orchestra are on hand to sing and play the riddle tunes leading up to Dan Seymour's Coast to Coast Calls. 
Be listening again later tonight when Sing It Again comes along on most of these same CBS stations. Now stay tuned for Von Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where you laugh with Lucille Ball and my favorite husband on Saturday nights, the Columbia Broadcasting System.